there is a $7 application on Steam that can quite literally make your Steam Deck look twice as smooth, and it's called Lossless Scaling. It basically turns your Steam Deck into a next-gen feeling system like a Steam Deck 2 without even touching the hardware. It's all software-based. And the best part about it is that it's universal. You can apply it to literally any single game that you want or any piece of software or anything. It, it is a piece of software that runs alongside of whatever you want. It's not based on any single one developer. You can run this on any single game you want. If you want to double your frame rates in something like Elden Ring on your Steam Deck, you can totally do that. You are not bounded by anything. It's also very simple to use. With just a single button, you can pretty much just double your frame rate. And that's kind of just it. It's not magic, but it works really well most of the time. It shouldn't be used in every case scenario, but in a lot of the case scenarios, it's pretty good. I mean, if you're using DLSS in a game, I wouldn't use it then, but if you don't have the option available to you, then it is really good. Now, I wanna talk about more of the main value propositions. Why would you even want this piece of software to begin with, other than what I just said? I mean, if you have a Steam Deck, especially the OLED. It runs at 90 hertz. And if you are a owner, you'll know that that doesn't always hit the 90 hertz target on a lot of games. So lossless scaling complements the Steam Deck screen very, very well. And I say that because you can quite literally run a game lower than its 90 hertz refresh rate, which is actually realistic for a lot of games, especially AAA games. If you have lossless scaling, you can set your cap down to 40 and that'll give you a much more smoother experience having a consistent 40 and running lossless scaling than trying to use something like 60 hertz where it's kind of just all up in the air and moving around and it's never actually consistent. It could also help a lot too with unoptimized game ports that are becoming more and more common every single year, sadly, because of DLSS and stuff like this to begin with, you kind of need this stuff in this day and age anyway. And let's be honest, the Steam Deck is becoming more and more of an aging device, and that is just the sad reality of it. I've already made a video about the Steam Deck 2 potentially coming out in 2028, as rumors have suggested, but it's not unreasonable to try to get performance out of your aging hardware anyways. I know it's not that old, but you really do feel the sort of performance limits of the Steam Deck if you really do push it. And especially in AAA games where you could be suffering from like 24 to 25 frames per second, which is not unheard of. It is just, that's how AAA games are. Having loss of scaling in that scenario really does benefit you greatly. Your perceived motion clarity just goes way up, especially when you're running a game at like 30 frames for instance, and if it was 25 to 30 and you have it running at like 40 with lossless scaling and it stays at 40, that's great and that's what you want to see. And like I was saying before, the software is not locked to any single one application or game. You could run it on anything and that's where it comes in handy, especially on Steam Deck. If you're like me and you use your Steam Deck for emulation, you'll know how frustrating it can be sometimes, especially on Switch emulation where you're getting like 20 frames, 25 frames, especially on Tears of the Kingdom. Now, with lossless scaling, I can can really push it up to like 50. And I know it's not as good as something like the Switch 2, but in all honesty, you don't need a Switch 2 or the Switch 2 expansion to get those performance gains. You can really just dump your existing copy on your Switch and get those performance gains for an additional $7, which to me is way worth it. And it's not locked just to that, you can use it on anything. Using lossless scaling actually saves you battery in the end too, because when you're running it, you are using a piece of software to generate the frames versus the hardware. It's using way less and your wattage is way lower, saving you battery. So if you're running, like I was saying before, if you're running 80 frames and you're originally running it at 40, you have 80 frames. So so additional 40 with frame gen versus running 60 frames, but it's like kind of like dipping a bit. You'll actually see a pretty noticeable difference, maybe even like a 10% to 15% difference in overall battery life if you're playing that title. It really can extend the lifespan of your console and not just your Steam Deck, but your PC or anything really. But I want to focus on the Steam Deck and how much more it can actually expand the lifespan. If a Steam Deck 2 does come out, I'm sure by 2028, you'll know that the hardware feels like it's aged especially with games becoming more and more resource hungry every single year. But this is one thing where it's gonna actually make a huge difference with loss of scaling. I swear it's gonna make a big difference. If you try it, you won't wanna go back, believe me. And one of the last points on my pros list for this piece of software, Velocity Scaling, is gonna be the fact that the community is really awesome and they just love supporting the thing and the actual developer releases updates pretty frequently. And it's not so unheard of to actually see an update come out where it pretty much changes it 
drastically and improves performance. It's not unheard of. Now, I know it sounds like magic, but it's not all that. It, there is technical trade-offs and limits and everything, but I want to get into that because it's not all sunshine and rainbows. There is some problems that it has. One of the main ones is that it has a lot of input latency. Not, not more than what you'd have with your base rate. If you have 40 frames, like I was saying in my previous example, and you're running at 80, you're going to be having input latency because those 80 frames or 40 frames are not real frames. They're just generated frames. So it's going to feel like you're running it at 40 frames a second, which is not great, I will say, because you will have double, in that scenario, you'll have double the latency, which isn't great. But for motion clarity on things that don't really matter, like if it's not an FPS game, if you're just playing casually, you'll it's going to be great. FPS, I would not recommend loss of scaling. Just right out of the gate, I'll tell you that right now. Another thing is too that I haven't really noticed on 2X as often, but it does come up, I will say, but it's more on like when you 3X it. So if you're like tripling your frames or even quadrupling it, I'm sure you'll see it on that. Ghosting and artifacting on UI and HUD elements, which is a big problem with it. And I'm sure that'll get addressed later in the future because it is software and software can improve over hardware, which is bounded to something. So that is a promise that could be fixed in the future with updates but as of now I have noticed it myself especially on three times and four times especially but not as much on 2x where it's not as noticeable if it does happen, but on 3X, you will notice ghosting and artifacting on UI elements and all that stuff. It is there. It also doesn't affect the image resolution, so it's not making it look sharper or anything. It's going to look the same, so it's pretty much, if you're running 1080p, it's going to run 1080p, and it's going to try to match the frames to that. It's not going to make it sharper and clearer, but that's something that can also be changed in the future because it is software, and there's, that's the whole thing is because it's software, it's so open, and things can change down the road it's not locked to anything which is why I think that a seven dollar upgrade I mean really a seven dollar upgrade is so worth it because you can take this anywhere and that's just the whole thing and for seven dollars you're getting what a thousand dollar GPUs can do and I'm being honest it's really just an amazing piece of software it has changed the way I use my Steam Deck completely and there's no doubt about it I don't use it on every single game but when it comes time to use it, it is great. I have no regrets with buying it. And I think for any Steam Deck users who are watching this video, I think that it's worth a look at the very least. And if you've used it, let me know down below. I'll read the comments. I promise I will. If you are not subscribed, then why not subscribe? I'm a small channel. I really would appreciate it. We just hit 260 subscribers, which is great. And yeah, I hope to see you guys watching more videos. And that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching. And I, I hope to see you in the next one.